Hey everyone, how's it going? Coming back at you with another video. Um, this time I'm going to be doing the signaling pathways of the endocrine hormones. This is on page 322 of First Aid in the 2017 version. I think it's a little different page number wise in newer and older versions, uh, but you can go ahead and find it. It's in the endocrine physiology chapter. I recommend you uh, look at the table as I walk you through this. Um, to be honest, this table was really annoying to memorize. Um, I kind of have been putting it off until now. It's like 10 days before step one that I'm supposed to take it. And I finally got around to coming up with a creative and systematic way of remembering this stuff without having to just wrote memorize the table because I'm pretty bad at doing that. This table is pretty high yield for the exam. So I definitely, definitely recommend you try to remember it. And hopefully this video can help you with that. So uh, to begin with, uh, let's just kind of jump right into it. And just a quick note before we begin, NRTK at the bottom, that stands for non-receptor tyrosine kinase. And just remember that that's your jack stat pathway. Um, and then you should be good. Okay. Um, everything else on here is pretty self-explanatory. So the to begin, let's start with just going into this. So I'll, I'll begin with the ant, uh, with the pituitary. Okay. And with the pituitary, you can subdivide that into anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. And then the anterior pituitary, you can actually divide into the two cell types. And you can think of the basophils, which are the darker staining cells, and then the acidophils. Okay, uh, let's start with the basophils. And there's a mnemonic that most people know for that. It's B-flat, and that is the, what, the hormones that are released by the basophils. Okay, so B-flat, so F-S-H, L-H. A C T H and T S H. That's your B flat. Okay. Uh, the remaining hormones released by the anterior pituitary are going to go in the bottom line because we did the top line, so now we'll go to the bottom line, the non-receptor non tyrosine kinase. And what remains would be prolactin and growth hormone. So those are your two remaining anterior pituitary hormones. Uh, okay, moving on, posterior pituitary. What are those two hormones? I'll give you a second to think about that. Okay, so that would be oxytocin and ADH. So where does this go? Okay, uh, the two main re receptor classes that I think of are cyclic AMP and IP3. Um, so then I know that I, it's got to go in IP3. So uh, for this pituitary, it's going to be, what did we say? We said oxytocin. Okay, and then we said ADH. Okay, now before I go on to ADH, it's important to remember ADH has two places where it binds, okay? Two different receptors. One receptor is in the kidneys. And what does that do? That is ADH is released when you're thirsty, when you're uh, volume depleted, um, when you need to get basically absorb more water. And so what does it do? It binds in the kidney in the collecting duct and inserts aquaporin to channels and reabsorbs water. Okay. Um, that is the V2 receptor. Okay. Where else does it bind? It binds in the vessels, in the blood vessels. Um, when you are thirsty, think about it, you don't have a lot of um, fluid, you're, you're dehydrated. So what should you do? You should constrict to um, kind of account for that loss of, of you're just dehydrated, right? So that is the V1 receptor. So how do I know which ADH goes here? Well, I have a kind of a way of remembering this. Anything that's really involving the kidney here is going to be a cyclic AMP receptor, period. Okay, so ADH uh, V1 involving the vessels, that's not the kidney. So I know that V1's got to go with IP3, okay? Um, and then, like I said, my rule is if it's involving the kidney, it's um, going to be a cyclic AMP. So now we can put ADH V2 up here. Okay. Um, moving on from there, uh, like I said, let's go back to my kidney rule. If it involves the kidney, it's going to be cyclic AMP. What else involves the kidney? Uh, think about parathyroid hormone. So that's going to go up here with uh, cyclic AMP. Okay, and when I think about parathyroid hormone, there's another, uh, uh, I guess, hormone that just pops in my head um, that's related to parathyroid hormone, does the opposite of what it does, calcitonin. 
that also is cyclic AMP, and that's how I remember that it goes up here. Okay. All right. So moving on from there, let's go ahead and do the releasing hormones. So for the releasing hormones, the first thing I do is I go up to my cyclic AMP and I underline the consonants, F, L, and T. Um, not the vowel A, F, L, and T. Okay. And then I have to figure out where this releasing hormone goes. So I look at the second letter of cyclic AMP, that's a vowel. The second letter of IP3, that's a consonant. So these are consonants. So their releasing hormone is going to go with the consonant IP3. Um, and so those are going to go down here. So the releasing hormone for FSH and LH is gonadotropin releasing hormone. So that will go here. And then the releasing hormone for ACTH is a uh, going to be TSH. And that is, no, I'm sorry, not TS, TSH, um, is going to be CRH. And so because it's a vowel and cyclic AMP, second letter is a vowel, uh, we can kind of put right here, under here, uh, with the ACTH, ACTH is going to be CRH. Okay? Okay, next. Um, I Next we need to put in human uh, HCG. Sorry. Uh, we need to put in HCG. So where is that going to go? Well, FSH and LH, think about our sex hormones. Uh, so H, uh, HCG is going to go with those. Okay, so HCG is cyclic AMP. Okay, moving on from there. ACTH. Well, do you remember what happens if you have too much ACTH? Uh, think about it. Well, you get um, uh, you get uh, hyperpigmentation from too much ACTH because it's related to melanocyte stimulating hormone. So I know that if it's ACTH, too much of it is causing the hyperpigmentation, then it must be related to MSH and stimulating those receptors. So MSH is going to go up here. Okay. Um, moving on from there. Let's see, um, growth hormone, releasing hormone. This is the one that I just can't really think of a good way to remember it, but it's also cyclic AMP. So I'm gonna just throw it up here, okay? Okay, moving on from there. Uh, let's go ahead and knock out our, uh, our gastro, our stomach stuff. So the stomach, remember, there's kind of five important receptors you need to think about, okay? Let's go through them. That would be histamine, um, gastrin, uh, the vagus nerve, basically. Um, and then you have your inhibitory stuff. So your somatostatin and you have your uh, prostaglandins, okay? Um, two inhibitory ones, somatostatin and prostaglandins, and then your three kind of uh, gastric acid releasing hormones. Um, and the way I remember that is for the releasing hormones, um, uh, the vagus nerve is going to be g so uh, is the Q pathway where you have the IP3, the calcium, all that stuff, um, as well as gastrin. So gastrin and vagus nerve are the IP3 pathway. Um, and then the, uh, sorry about that. Um, histamine is the G sub S pathway, which is cyclic AMP. So if you, if you can remember that, then th these should be pretty easy. So histamine goes up with cyclic AMP, and then uh, gastrin should go with IP3, because that's your G sub Q pathway. Okay? Okay, cool. So moving on from there. If you know histamine binds to the stomach, you also have to remember what receptor it is. Okay, in the stomach, it's H2. And... I don't know. The way I remember that is like, it's the specialized one. Uh, so and specialized is always the two kind of like, if you think about the heart muscarinic in the heart is specialized, it's M2. So in the stomach, it's H2, uh, which leaves histamine uh, H1, which is your kind of overall allergic stuff. Um, so if it's not cyclic AMP, then it's got to be IP3. So histamine H1 can kind of go there by like elimination. Okay, moving on from there. So if you see, we're already kind of getting through to this. Um, the next thing we did is we didn't do uh, thyroid releasing hormone uh, for TSH because uh, I forgot about it. So let's go back. Remember, if it's a consonant, it goes with IP3. TSH is a consonant, so its releasing hormone goes down here. Okay, sorry, I left that out earlier. Okay, let's jump over to cyclic GMP. So for these, these are pretty easy. Just think about what are the 
hormones that cause you to relax for your for your um, smooth muscle and your vessels to relax. Well, nitric oxide is obviously the first thing that comes to mind. And then you got to remember your two um, natriuretic peptides, the ones that are released from your heart when they're stretched and they want to kind of get rid of salt and get rid of volume. So BNP and AMP will go up here. Okay. Um, moving on from there, the intracellular receptors, I'm not going to write these all out, but these you should know. These are just your steroids and things that are nonpolar and go into the cell. So progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, cortisol, aldosterone. I'd say the only one uh, that, oh, also your T3, T4. I'd say the only one that I sometimes forget is vitamin D. Just remember, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, so it has to be intracellular receptor. Okay, next we do the receptor tyrosine kinase. This is easy. Insulin plus growth factors. That's it. So insulin, and then anything blank GF. If it ends in GF, if it's a growth factor, it's going to be receptor tyrosine kinase. Okay, a uh, couple more things to add on here is the non-receptor tyrosine kinases. So on, in addition to prolactin and growth hormone, which um, we already talked about, we're just going to add on a few things. So what I this is pretty easy. Think about the stimulators. So anything that stimulates more things to happen, to be released, goes in NRTK. So I think about my GCSF, okay, granulocytes, uh, colony stimulating factor. I think about EPO because it causes uh, red cells to be made. And then I think about TPO, thrombopoietin, okay? And that's going to cause uh, platelets to be made, okay? And then the last thing that you just kind of have to remember is your immunomodulators, okay? So this is your, you know, ILs, your IL-2, IL-2, IL-6, etc. okay? Um, and that's kind of it. The one thing I didn't mention is angiotensin 2. Uh, this is just kind of something you have to remember, and angiotensin 2 is going to go here. Um, but the way that I kind of remember that is ADHV1 causes the vessels to constrict. Um, and so angiotensin 2 does the same thing. And so it probably should be IP3. Um, and that's about it. So I hope that was helpful, and uh, good luck on step one.